Can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, as you may or may not know, I'm, I've been an alderman in the city of St. Anne for the last five and a half years. Um, today I'm here because I'm running for the St. Louis County Council District 2. The job of the county councilman is no different than the job of an alderman. It's just a larger population to serve. You see, the county is merely a municipality. It's equal in authority to that of the municipalities under the state of Missouri. And it's likely one of the reasons when we hear better together, quote, municipal numbers, they keep changing, 91, 90, 92, they can't seem to get it right. Better together and a few others seem not to be able to keep any of their numbers straight. Certainly in the case of my city, they get very little right. And the reason I want to go into my city is because we seem to be under attack here. So if anybody had any feelings about St. Anne, I want to make sure that you understood where, what we have done. Um, Better Together has stated that in 2013, the city of St. Anne collected 37.47% of its revenue in court fine revenue. The inference is made and repeated by some local politicians that it all came from petty minor traffic violations and somehow violated state law. The Missouri State Auditor disagrees with Better Together's calculations and concluded that 27.8% was the number and was below the amount authorized by the state law. The state auditors also gave St. Anne Court a good ranking on our accounting and court practices which is the second highest ranking given in the state. Additionally, conveniently left out of Better Together's narrative was the context in which the tickets that resulted in its revenue were written. In 2013, the city was in the middle of a partnership with the Missouri Department of Transportation to lower the numbers of accidents on I-70 that were resulting of speed. This effort started in 2010 and by 2013, serious accidents on St. Anne's portion of I-70 went from 143 in 2009 to 11 by the end of 2013. If you guys saw as you were passing over the bridge on the way here, there was a major accident right underneath that bridge on the way here. Revenue generated by these tickets was used to pay for the overtime for police officers who were enforcing the, the uh, efforts made on the highway. It was and still is used for school resource and DARE officers in the Rittner and Pappenville school districts, including at Rittner High School, which is not in our purview, but the municipalities that surround them were unable to help them in the past four years, so we have put officers in there to, have to uh, help them with that. Better Together fails to note that in October of 2011, our Board of Aldermen took steps to reduce its own government by voting to eliminate an entire ward, reducing St. Anne's Alderman from 10 to 8, and using the extra dollars to reestablish the St. Anne Newsletter so we could better communicate with our residents. And prior to that, in April of 2010, the Board of Aldermen voted to reduce its income from 475 to 375 per month. Presumably, according to Better Together, I make $9,000 a year. Sure, wish someone would find that extra 4500 for me because it would have come in handy on this campaign. <laughs> <clears throat> Better Together's claim that the creation of a UNIGOV brought growth to Indianapolis is very questionable. Just this past July, we learned that Indiana did not see business growth until 2013 when they elected a new governor who cut taxes. So Better Together's inability to put out correct information reflects irresponsibility on their part and the part of their sponsors. District 2's current county councilman voted yes on Stinger's police bill without investigating the facts of the municipal departments. My residents and my personal experiment, experience with our county councilman, which was non-responsive at best, makes it clear to us that it is extremely important that the well, to the welfare of St. Louis County, that those in charge of the council today are not in charge next January. I wish to serve the people as their St. Louis County Councilman because I believe that those who govern over us should be listening to us. This is not what I nor quite a few of my residents have experienced from our current county councilman. As a matter of fact, I've been attending meetings since October. and one time the council actually told a resident the public speaking portion of their meeting was not to answer news questions. 
but only to allow him to speak. Just in the last year, we have witnessed the County Council pass through the unconstitutional police bill, the unconstitutional landlords bill, and then we have a senior tax bill, which though the people will get to vote on this one, it passed without any detailed information on how that tax is going to be used. Then, of course, there's the whole debate on the Metro South extension. I don't recall being asked for my opinion on that, do you? Personally, I feel there are a number of important ways to invest the amount of money in the county. But certainly, as a taxpayer, would not vote for an extension on the Metrolink until the city and county allowed them to have their own police force, like UMSLs, so rider safety is properly maintained. For that matter, the council should consider restructuring the next budget and reprioritizing it. They certainly have some staffing issues that have come before the council every month that I've been attending since February. I, for one, certainly expect my government to abide by the state laws and definitely the Constitution, to follow the same laws that businesses are required to follow, and most certainly I expect accountability for the money, both incoming and outgoing. I personally emailed the seniors count people, those are the ones that get the money for the tax, and they stated that they could not find out how this tax was going to be used. This November election cycle is critical to St. Louis County, and our state decisions are being made behind closed doors with a majority vote. Predefined bills are being passed that mandate to the people. Some have been deemed unconstitutional. These legislators have the votes and are not listening to their constituents. I have several residents who never received a response from our councilman on staying at police bill. And for me to get a response, I had to let them know that I was going to um, let all my residents know in a newsletter that goes out to 13,000 people that he was not responding to their own. And I got a quick phone call. <laughs> County Councilman Harder, Mark Harder, Hazel Irby, and Colleen Wassinger called for an investigation into the April voting debacle. And a week before it was set to be heard, the council announced they would not be hearing public comments. Not a peep from the District 2 office. Just last week, our County Councilman led the council meeting. The councilman had 28 speakers, and he decided that versus three minutes usually allowed, he was going to reduce that to one minute per person. Is this the St. Louis County Council that we want in place? Mandating, not listening, seemingly not caring what we think? For that matter, this better together group should succeed at passing their agendas through. Do we really want the people in charge to be those that feel that they do not have to answer to us? My record stands strong with the citizens of St. Anne. And I'm happy to say I have one here. <laughs> Ask any of them. I will vote the will of the people. I not only listen to the people, I ask their opinions publicly on Facebook, through emails, placing information in our local newspaper, The Localoid, pushing the information out to the public because we all know how busy our lives get while we're working and raising our families. Sometimes we're not thinking about politics and need our politicians to push information out to us. I, for one, did, and it wasn't happening. So while I was not concentrating on the very reasons that I moved to St. Anne, my mall fell apart, and my city went into a steady decline. A friend asked me to run for alderman, and my first reaction was, me? Then I took a, look, took a look around my city, and I realized my mistakes. I had been active in the schools, treasurer of the PTOs for 13 years, active in church, club, and high school volleyball, which my girls love. But I guess I just expected my government to be doing the right things. Five and a half years later, should you choose to visit St. Anne, you'll see a world of difference economically, socially, and see a community that works together as being revived. Have you seen what my city staff and board of aldermen have done with the mall that used to be in the Northwest Plaza? The media does not and will not tell you how successful we have been because it does not fit their current agenda. With the help of a great developer, Mr. Glarner, our old mall is now on track with A. Menards, Rulers, Regents Bank, 
Raising Cain, opening on the 30th at 10 a.m. <laughs> a Gen 3 Quick Trip, opening on September 1st. A Starbucks, Sprint, Here Today Store, Bob's Discount Furniture. We have Charter Spectrum, and they're opening also their training center on our, on our properties. The election board, as you've all heard in the news, with the Workforce Development Administrative Offices and an Assessor's Satellite Office. Three to four call centers already in the 500 building. And these are all now called at the crossings at Northwest. And yes, we do have a few other things going around town as well. There will be an Eagle Bank replacing the old regions. We have Aldi's wanting to move down closer to the rest of the grocery stores. There's a place, uh, it used to be in Wellston called Bustlet Burgers that's moving down near our family video store. It's supposed to be um, food made from scratch. We're really looking forward to that one. <laughs> and uh, recently, we, uh, in the last meeting, we authorized the St. Louis Black Belt Academy. And uh, she actually also trains police officers, which we thought was pretty cool too. Are we done yet, St. Anne? No, we're not. But we're on the right track. And this is what St. Louis County needs as well. Now I'm not saying that every municipality is going to survive. I am saying its survival should be decided by its residents and not someone who projects that they know better for us. Jobs are the answer. People need to feel independent to have hope. A reason to go to school. Jobs in North County have been neglected for the last three decades. Running our county should be about working for the people to make St. Louis County a strong and business-friendly environment, thus providing jobs for the people of St. Louis County, north, south, east, and west, while assisting in keeping our county schools strong, our citizens safe, our infrastructure strong, and providing necessary services to the people. Thank you. Of the, of the area is changing, then it would be within our purview to, to change the store. Let's say, for example, it's all commercial, the, isn't it? Up in the plaza? Yeah, it's all commercial. Some of this are going to be just business. So, like with the plaza, we um, we would approve plats so that the, the developer could work, you know, build within those plats. And if a special store is going in, we I, might have to approve that. I didn't realize that. I, I didn't. I thought that once they buy the property, it's their property, and so long as they follow the zoning law, I mean the, the general overall laws 